Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about the chi-square test of independence. So when do we perform a chi-square test of independence? It is supposed to be performed when we want to determine if there is a significant association or relationship between two categorical variables. So when we are dealing with two numerical variables, we always have a concept of correlation that we talk about. But what to do when we are dealing with two categorical variables? That is when the chi-square test of independence becomes important. What are the assumptions involved in the chi-square test of independence? It assumes the samples to have been collected randomly without any bias. It assumes that the observations are independent of each other. So we are talking about testing the independence of two features or two columns in the data. But the observations or the rows in the data are supposed to be independent. And the third and a very unique assumption here is because in case of a chi-square test, we will be working on something that's known as the contingency table or a cross tab. The frequency within each cell of the table is supposed to be at least five. That is when this test is supposed to work well. When I show you the hands-on demonstration, it will become clearer. Let's move to a problem statement and try to understand this a little better. So let's say a company owns two gaming apps, P1 and P2. It is trying to determine if education of the users has a significant impact on the type of app that users prefer to use, specifically differentiating between individuals with a technical or a tech versus a non-technical or non-tech educational background. Using the data provided, we need to conduct a test at a 5% level of significance. Let me take you to the data and it'll start becoming a lot clearer then. All right, so here is the kind of data that's been provided. We have the app or the platform P1 or P2, two choices, and we have the educational background of the users, which could be tech or non-tech. When you're dealing with two categorical variables like this, it is recommended that we put it into a contingency table. How do we do that? Let me select this entire data and do an insert here, and we will insert a pivot table. So let me hit OK here. It'll bring a pivot table region on a new worksheet, and I'll just drag the platform, let's say, to the rows and education to the columns and any of these fields to the values, right? So now you see the counts have populated here. Let me just zoom in a little bit so that you can read it properly. We can, of course, uncheck the blanks. And this is the kind of table that I was talking about. So what do we have and how do we read this table? So it says that there are six such users who prefer using app one and are from a non-technical background. Likewise, there are 21 such users who prefer using app one, but are from a technical background. Similarly, there are 18 such users who prefer using app two, but are from a non-technical background. And there are 15 such users who prefer using app two, but are from a technical background. Now we also have the column totals here and the row totals here. This is called a contingency table. And if you remember, the third assumption here for the chi-square test talked about each cell having at least a value of five. And you can see that every cell here at least has five observations. So this is the core table, and these are the derived pieces of information. The column totals and row totals are just the derived values. Now let's go back to the problem and understand step by step how are we going to solve it. So in this problem, it's already stated that we have to solve this at 5% level of significance. That's something which is a given. And let's see how do we state the null and alternate hypotheses in this case. The null hypothesis would be that the app usage and educational background are independent of each other. So it doesn't matter what the educational background of the user is, could use any app, P1 or P2. On the other hand, the alternate hypothesis says app usage depends on the educational background of users. So it is quite possible that people who are from non-technical background prefer using one app compared to the other or the other way. Now, remember, we are talking about the chi-square distribution. And if you have been following the sequence of videos that we've posted, you know that chi-square distribution was talked about in the chris Cole wallace test as well. It is essentially a positive distribution, which depends on the degrees of freedom. And as the degrees of freedom increase, it tends to become more and more symmetric or bell-shaped. What is the test statistic that's used here? It's given by this expression. So this is the chi-square statistic, and it's calculated as the difference of observed and expected values squared divided by the expected values, and you do a sum of all these values. So what are the terms here? First of all, what is this n? It's representing the number of cells in the contingency table. We are not talking about the margins here. When we talk about the number of cells, we are talking about these four cells, the central cells. What is the observed value? These observed values are the values which are given to us in the table. The expected values will be calculated. We'll do that shortly. 
And the degrees of freedom for a contingency table with R rows and C columns is given by R minus one multiplied by C minus one. So what is R in this case? It will be two rows. We are going to count these two rows. And how many columns do we have? We have two columns as well. We don't count the margins again. Keep this in mind. We only count the core values. So the degrees of freedom in our case will be two minus one multiplied by two minus one, which of course is one into one, which is going to be just one. That's the degrees of freedom. We'll be needing it to look for the critical value from the table. Now let's start calculating the test statistic. The first step is that we need to calculate the row totals, column totals, and grand totals. Since we use Excel pivots, we already know the row totals and column totals. So I have a separate worksheet for this where the same table has been copy pasted and I will continue to do all the calculations for you here. Now the next step is to calculate the expected frequency or expected values for each cell using this formula, which is row total multiplied by the column total divided by the grand total. So let's see how do we do this. First, we can list down the observed values and let's say P1 non-tech, what is the value? We have the value as six, right? P1 tech, what is the value? We have the value as 21, that's here. P2 non-tech is 18, as you can see here, and P2 tech is 15. So we have listed the observed values. It says expected values are calculated as row total into column total divided by the grand total. So let's understand this a little better. Row total. For this cell, what will be the expected value? The row total is 27. Let's take that. Multiplied by the column total, that is 24, divided by 60. So this is the expected value here. Again, for the next cell, what is the expected value? This is P1 tech. So row total is 27 multiplied by the column total, which is 36, divided by the grand total, which is 60. So this comes to 16.2. Likewise, for this cell, what will be the row total? It is 33. What is the column total? That is 24 divided by the grand total. This is the expected value. Once again, for this cell, here, what is the expected value? Row total, which is 33, multiplied by the column total, which is 36, divided by the grand total, which is 60. So we get these expected values. Now, you may be wondering why is it being calculated like this? So let me just give you a hint on that front. Let's say we did not know whether the user preferred app one or app two. If we select a person randomly from this pool of 60 individuals, what is the probability that we'll end up picking a non-tech person? it will be 24 divided by 60, which is 40% of 0 0.4. Similarly, what is the probability that we'll end up picking a person from a technical background? It is 36 divided by 60. Now, this is when we don't know their app preference. Total of 60 individuals were there. 24 came from a non-technical background and 36 came from a technical background. So now, if there is no such thing as app preference, this proportion of 40, 60, which is non-tech to tech, should be maintained for both the apps, which means 40% of this number, which is the total app one users, should be non-technical. How do we get that? 27 multiplied by 40% or 0.4. You see, this is the same number. Likewise, what should be the proportion of tech users who use app one? It should again be 60%. That's what I would expect if I don't know about any specific preference to begin with. So my expectation would be that out of these 27, 60% are app one users who are from a technical background. This is how we get the expected values, right? So you go by this formula or you apply this logic that you know we don't know anything about the app usage preference. We just determine the proportion of tech and non-tech users first and then multiply it with the totals. You'll get the same values or you just multiply the row total into column total divided by the grand total that gives you the exact same answers. Now, what is the chi-square statistic? Chi-square statistic is calculated using this formula. So we'll have to apply this here, observed minus expected, and we need to square this value. So raised to the power two, and then we divide it by the expected value. So this comes to 2.13. Now we can just copy paste this formula everywhere else. And as you can see, there is a summation sign for chi-square statistic. So I will have to do a sum of these values here. I can just select this range. So now this is the test statistic. How do we know, based on this, should we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis? We'll have to get to the critical value. And where do we get the critical value from? We'll have to go to the chi-square table for that. Let's do that. So once we come to the chi-square table, it talks about the degrees of freedom 
here and it talks about the alpha or the level of significance here. Our case was one degree of freedom and we are looking for 5% level of significance. So we are interested in this value. Now the critical value is 3.84. So we have this kind of a scenario where we have uh, the critical value here at 3.84. The region to the right is of course the alpha region. And our tested statistic is of course within this alpha region or the rejection region. So now you might be wondering that how is this shape looking so weird? It's because of the degrees of freedom. As the degrees of freedom increase, it begins to take the shape of a bell. But right now, since we are just looking at one degree of freedom, it doesn't look like a bell-shaped curve, right? But we get the idea that there is the critical value and to the right is the rejection region and our test statistic falls within the rejection region. So in this case, we reject the null hypothesis. Here's the step-by-step -step way of solving this problem. We already had the row and column totals when we created the pivot table. We got the expected frequencies like this and we repeated this calculation for every cell in the contingency table to get all the expected frequencies finally derived the chi-square statistic by doing a total and looked for a critical value let's see how do we solve this using python so in python we are once again going to use the library pandas to be able to read the data that we saw we will be needing scipy stats to use the specific class which is known as chi-square contingency let's load these and then we are going to read the data we have a specific sheet where the raw data was present. So we are going to read the raw data as is to a data frame. And then we are going to create the contingency table, which will serve as an input to this chi-square contingency function. We are calling the cross tab from pandas, and we are mentioning that we want a cross tab between these two columns. First is the platform or the app, and second is the education. Let's run this. This is the kind of table we got. Notice that it doesn't by default give us the row total and column total. And we don't even need that because chi-square contingency internally will do those calculations. Let's just store this entire thing by the name of cross tab or a CT, which is an object that we have created. And we need to pass this object to the chi-square contingency. Now, if you see the documentation for this particular method, it gives out a lot of information. For example, it gives us the test statistic, the p-value, the degrees of freedom, and also the table. But since we've already seen the table, we are just interested in the test statistic and p-value. We already have seen the test statistic in Excel, but we'll just compare if we get the same output here. Let's run this and see. So the test statistic it calculated is 6.46, which is exactly what we got in Excel. In addition, it also gave us a p-value, which is 0 0.01. Now 0 0.01 compared to 0 0.05 is of course less. So when p-value is less than alpha or level of significance, we reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, both ways, whether we go by the critical value or the p-value, we will reject the null hypothesis. But please note, just like correlation is not to be interpreted as causation. Similarly, the chi-square test also depends on the kind of data we have collected. So if you bring totally unrelated variables and try to make sense out of it using chi-square, it wouldn't be very fruitful. But if you have tried to study something which is specific to a context and the variables may have a meaningful association, then this validation makes sense. Hope this helps. Thank you.